Good morning, good morning, good morning, and a good morning. Is it a good morning? Praise God. Nothing better than a good morning. <laughs> yes, home morning. Hallelujah, to wake up in heaven would be another wonderful thing. But God's got a plan, and we've got to fulfill it. Amen? <clears throat> this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Because everyone here has a choice. The power to choose is vital. We can't lose sight of that. Every day you have a choice. Every one of us. There's something else we have a choice of doing. And that's whether you are recognizing your enemy or not. You, have a, you and I have a choice every single day to, get, to go to the throne, get reconnected, refreshed, empowered, get cleaned up, filled up, dressed up, so we can walk out and expose our enemy. You know, so many times people don't even know who their enemy is. Or they lose sight of it. Or they've been drifted away from it. Knowing your enemy is vital. But I'm going to come right to the point. Your worst enemy is you. Self. That's the, we're our worst enemy. Amen? To be honest with you, that is the truth. We are our worst enemy. We have the power to say yes or no. We power to uh, reject things, accept things. We have the power. God has given us everything. We have the power to forgive, to bless. We have the power to walk away from offense. The problem is, is self-centeredness is a killer. That's where people put blame and how they feel. They put blame on everything. Oh, this person, this person said that. Who gives a hoot? Pick up your shovel, amen, then the cross, and then your sword. But without knowing your enemy in the area of influence, people walk in deception. They walk in the flesh. They walk in the soul and not in the spirit. You know, again, you will keep hearing about who told you that. Well, people really are not even putting that into practice. If they would put that into practice, there would be more freedom. If they put the things that people learned by the kingdom and been led by the Spirit, they would be free all the time. There wouldn't be any bondage. There'd be victory. There'd be expansion. There'd be taking more of the land. But self-centeredness is a real killer. And that's what the enemy promotes. It's self-centeredness. That's selfish ambitions. Things are promoting of self, protecting of self. Well, this is how I feel. Well, this is how I think. There's too many eyes. Makes you a, a monster. Ay, 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 ay. We've talked about it as being a demonic pizza, right? People are chefs to I. Knowing your enemy is vital. In 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to share something that may sound quite strange. Of course, it wouldn't be the first time. By not knowing your enemy, you do not know your God. I'm going to just leave it at that because you're going to have to figure it out. But when you don't know your enemy, you don't know your God. Because by knowing your God, you know your enemies. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it does not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. It has not been revealed what we shall fully be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's, that's glorious in itself. This is where we can't take things for granted nonchalantly. We have to believe what this word says. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. 
The word of God is not an opinion. It is a fact. Eternal, burned in heaven for all human beings that are willing to accept it, follow it, believe it, and practice it. Verse 3. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin is all, also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not. Whoever abides in Jesus doesn't sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, again, that word might means he did destroy the works of the devil. And you and I must continue that mission. In other words, to keep them down. Keep them exposed. Knowing your enemies. If you're not exposing your enemy because you don't know your enemies. Amen? Verse 9. He who has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are exposed or manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. See, people don't realize that people are murdering one another with their tongue. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother is righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Again, those that practice the sustaining laws of righteousness, they avoid the temptations of sin's evil influence. These are laws of righteousness that God has established that we are to be submissive to and abide in. Jesus God, Jesus God removed his creative authority to, became, to become an undercover human sacrifice because they didn't really know who he was. He kept himself blinded. He, they were, he kept them blinded to know who he was. So Jesus, God, removed his creative authority to become an undercover human sacrifice to access the prison walls of the kingdom of darkness and to release those taken captive spiritually and physically. Then he armed them with the truth to carry out their call, their purpose, and their destiny. But again, without knowing your enemy, you will not fulfill your call, purpose, and destiny. It doesn't mean that we focus on everything of our enemy. But you better know what you're being attacked by. See, one of the things is when you ignore your enemy, the first thing that will happen, you're out of divine order. You will agree with something that puts you right out of God's order and not even know it. You will no longer be accountable or submissible. You'll just do your own thing. And it could be for just that moment, you just opened yourself up to a lot of stuff and don't even realize it. See, because the enemy loves to have access. He loves to go in your closet and hide. He moves while you're picking out your garments. I think I'll wear this today. And then you're going to put on something that he's placed in there because you didn't know it was from him. And the next thing you know, you're in trouble. You're making decisions you shouldn't have been. You're self-centered now. Remember, he always wants you to get to a point of being self-centered. Me, 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 I, I, I. It's how I feel. It's how I think. It's what I want. It's what I desire. It's what I'm going to do. Even Jesus rebuked Peter, remember? Peter even 
thought he was doing the right thing. Lord, I'll kill anybody who gets in your path. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are mindful of things of men. He became self-centered. He was trying to prevent what God's plan was, God's will. We are in a time right now where it's activated tremendously. There are believers that are not doing God's will. They're still self-centered, doing their own will. Still blaming people for their stuff. They're still in offense, rejection, blame, fear, and all the other stuff. It's all self-centeredness. It's a me and myself syndrome. And I. First Peter chapter 5. In verse 1, let's speak it together. The elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. God resists the self-centered, but he gives grace, plan, to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in his time, casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober and be what? Vigilant, which means be alert. But to be alert, you must be consistent. Amen? See, there's two key, keys to consistency. The one is discipline. The other one is love. If you're disciplined, you'll be consistent. Because you don't go by how you feel or how you think or what is going around you. Your environment does not influence you. And if you love, then the word says, if you love me, you'll obey me. So those two things will keep you consistent. And by being consistent, you'll be alert. If you're not consistent, you cannot maintain an alertness. Amen? Amen? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about looking for someone, enticing them to become self-centered so he can attack them and devour them. This is what it's about. It says, resist the devil, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings and the same temptations are experienced by all, of it, all your brethren in the world. But may the God of grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you've suffered this by learning it, you will, he'll perfect you, he'll establish you, he'll strengthen you, and then he'll settle you to, so that you will become more alert by being more consistent. Amen? And to him be glory and honor and dominion. Alert and consistency. Keys. Of consistency is what? Discipline and the love of God. Love for God. In Revelation 12. Knowing your enemy. You know, I was riding my bicycle... And I was on the phone while I was riding my bicycle. Don't do that. And I was coming down this road and I was on the phone. And I had to build up speed to come up the hill. I had to make a right hand turn to come up the hill. And this car came right next to me. 
And the Holy Spirit says, the face of your enemy. I said, what? I'm thinking, I'm talking on the phone. I'm going, what? What are you talking about? And I'm trying to get ahead of this car, go behind this car, because i got to build momentum up to get up to this hill. He would not let me. And when he finally slowed down enough and passed me, and the Lord said, the face of your enemy. I couldn't see his face. When I tried to get up the hill, my front of the bike flipped. Bike went flying. I busted my knee. This was about, I don't know. My daughter was with me. She wanted to chase the dude down and beat him up, you know. And I went on the ground. And it took me about, I don't know, two, four, four to six weeks to recover because I busted up my leg. But the face of my enemy was right there. Now, of course, maybe if I wasn't on the phone, I'd be more alert. And the person I was talking to was all concerned because they heard me flying and whatever. <laughs> and my daughter saying all kinds of stuff. And she was ready to chase this guy down and whatever. But it was one of those things where your enemy is everywhere. Everywhere. He can become anyone. Anyone that's willing to allow them to be used by the enemy. It takes us one simple split second of a choice to be used by the enemy. It takes one compromise to be used by the enemy. This is where you and I must examine ourselves in all the time. We are always looking, asking ourselves, is what I'm doing pleasing God or displeasing God? If you're not willing to, then you know your enemy's got control on you. If you're not willing to take that opportunity in that time, what am I doing? Is pleasing God or displeasing God? Then the enemy already has access to you. Why? Because he's got you distracted. Remember, distraction is one of his weapons, isn't it? Isn't that a part of deception? Amen. Revelation 12, 7, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they didn't prevail, nor was their place found for them in that third heaven anymore. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil, and Satan. Now, why did, was the serpent in heaven? No. Does everybody understand it? He called him the serpent in heaven. Why? Because for Satan to access into this realm, into the garden, he had to take possession of a serpent's body. Get it? He couldn't just walk in there, hey, I'm Satan. No way. He had to take possession of a body in this realm for him to access into that garden. Is everybody okay? And he couldn't take access of a human yet. Amen? Even though he's a shapeshifter, he had to take access of an animal. God allowed him to take access of an animal. Called a serpent. Who deceives the whole world, includes even believers. He was cast to the earth. The earth is the location. And his angels were cast with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ, have become the accuser of our brethren who accused them day before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of their lamb. That's being, so that means that being sanctified all the time by the blood. You overcome by sanctification. That means you got a quick repentant heart. That means you're examining yourself all the time and everything you do. Gosh, Lord, if this didn't please you, I repent. Does everybody understand? It's the simplest things. It doesn't mean you're a fornicator, drug addict, or anything else. It's the simple things of being disobedient that now cause us to stumble. It's no longer the sins that you and I are so accustomed to that are written all over the walls. It's the little things now. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb because they were constantly repentant. They were in an attitude of repentance. And by the word of their testimony, who Christ is. And they did not love their lives to death. In other words, they were not self-centered. 
Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And again, his time is short. Things are about to happen more and more and more. They still are happening right now. People are being arrested. People are going to prison. And the, the media will not tell you everything because it is the, those are the prophets of Baal in all media now. They have taken over. Listen, this is something that just happened overnight. This is a process of multiple thousands of generations where the enemy is infiltrated and constantly expanding his kingdom more and more. They are sophisticated and they are well organized. And they are all over the world and they run the world system. They run it. So to kick them out isn't an easy thing right now. Why? Because finally the body of Christ is getting bold. They're finally infiltrating. They finally become kingdom-minded, and some of them become attorneys to infiltrate. Some become military to infiltrate. Some become prayer warriors to infiltrate. Things are changing now. <laughs> so we see here that this is a sophisticated war by the powers of darkness and the powers of light. So we see here that it's not only just angels because he took, it took a third of the angels, but they all, they're offsprings of demons <laughs> that control the world system. They control the culture here. They control the entertainment. They control language. But they can't control the tongues. They can in, imitate it. That's why that's the only language they do not, the powers of darkness do not interpret. They don't know. But they know what you think. But even when you pray in tongues, you don't know what you think. Thank God. They have control over marriage and families. Economic, environmentally, governmental, education, technology, the internet, the media, the medical, religion. Look at all the religions that are out there battling one another. In the Middle East, they're killing one another and blowing one another because of what they believe They're in control of all the music. They're in control of climate, TV, political, even employment, jobs. They're in control of the arts, construction, all kinds of things they're in control of. Listen, remember, Satan comes as an angel of light. So does his kingdom. So do his people. They have a form of righteousness, a form of godliness, but they can't practice it and produce it. Amen? They're liars and deceivers. The sophisticated operation of Satan's kingdom of darkness, or what we call the kingdom of deception, has eroded, corroded, and corrupted our worldly true generation from generation to generation. The world, or the operating system, has been replaced and been replacing the love of God for the love of money and the love of self. It's been going on. It's been going on for a long time. Why do people use drugs, self, to try and hide their pains, cover their pains? You know, what is everybody still looking for? God's presence, and they just don't know it. Nothing's changed to that degree. It is a sophisticated operation. It is a sophisticated kingdom. They are placed in all places physically and spiritually. And they are slowly becoming disarmed and removed. But you got to remember, they've been doing this from generation to generation to generation. Now they've come to their maximum place. Until Satan himself possesses, the spirit of Satan t possesses an individual to tempt to step into the temple and complain to, uh, proclaim himself as God. When he does that, we're out of here. 2 Corinthians 4. But in the meantime, we can kick buck for the, uh, and participate in warfare for the greatest harvest. They'll be attached to the rapture. 2 Corinthians 4.
They can even come on bicycles, you know, it doesn't matter. They knock on your doors a lot. <laughs> they try to bring doctrines of demons. In verse 1, therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. We don't give up. We don't quit. We don't wimp out. Amen. We fight until death. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel, our truth, the message of truth is veiled or blinded, it is veiled to those who are what? They're perishing. They're dying. They're being deceived. They're being taken out. They don't know the truth. They may have a form of godliness. They may be good and nice people. I know many of them. But they're not right. They do not know how to practice righteousness. Their mouths are foul. Their hearts are deceived. And our minds have no direction of heaven bound. They're fear bound. But they're good people. Hallelujah. It says, whose minds the God of this age, who is Satan in his kingdom, has blinded, who do not believe or will follow the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, which would shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord ourselves, your bond servants, because we're bound to the Lord, bound to the Spirit, for Jesus' sake. For if the God of God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the Lord, glory of the God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this earthen vessel, this treasure in this earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. See, people talk about self-confidence. That's dangerous. It's called confidence in self. <laughs> Your confidence is in the Lord. My confidence is in Him and everything I do. I, if I bring myself in it, I'm, I'm going to fall. I'm going to stumble. I'm going to be an idiot. A temporary moron even. In other words, that means I'm going to make decisions in how I feel. What I think is best for me. Not according to the kingdom. You know, as you walk with the Lord more and more, you know what pleases him. The more you know, my wife and I know what pleases one another. Amen? The more you know, you get close to a friend, you know what a friend pleases one another. You know what they're, they like to eat, what their best dessert is, you know, what, what their favorite movies are. You know a lot of things about them. So you know those things that please them. Amen? Now you have the choice of whether promoting something that pleases them or not. Same thing with your relationship with the Lord. As you begin to know, there are things that you don't need to go to ask him about. You know it's a yes or no. But so many people try to manipulate the Lord. Because there truly is in a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. You know, still asking for those goofy things. When they ain't earned them yet. See, when you stop asking for yourself, God, God starts blessing you. <laughs> when you ask more for the kingdom of God... To expand the kingdom of God, more souls, more harvests, and so forth, access, more anointing, more. Do you know, those things are what pleases God. Why? Because you know what pleases Him. Things change in your life then. There's a relationship, but you still have the choice. You still have the power to choose what pleases Him or not. What pleases yourself? Oh, Lord, I really don't feel like doing this right now. I mean, lightning's not going to come. But I can tell you when you ask him something later, he may say, well, I really don't feel like doing answering that right now. Because what you sow is what you reap. Oh, Lord, I really didn't feel like going to service. I really didn't feel like participating. I know when I had to, I think I'll make an excuse so I can uh, escape not having to do this and be accountable. Yeah, I'll just reason with myself. Disgusting. Harmful. Not kingdom minded, still self centered. Is everybody okay? Glory. 
God the ba of the Babylonian system, the God of this world. It's a Babylonian system. has blinded humanity. It is a massive destructive weapon called deception. It blinds people. Without divine intervention, people are lost. Listen, you need divine intervention not only through salvation, amen, but deliverance, healing, knowledge. Why? Because God is light. And you need to be able to see. It's when people begin to drift from these things, even though that they've been saved, they begin to compromise certain things and, and become self-centered and drift away from these things. And God's presence is not as important as it used to be. The fulfillment of self-presence is always trying to be right before people instead of being righteousness before God. God is the light and his people will be unable and the people of God are unable to comprehend the true message. That's why some people can only grow so far and then they can't grow anymore. They get stopped, limitations on their life. Unable to comprehend the true message of freedom, power, and dominion over their enemy. They can only go so far. Why? Self-centered. That moment of self-centeredness can kill you. It can open the door all over again to everything you've been delivered and freed from. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. In which we all once walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. Who is the antichrist spirits. Satan. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Among whom also we once, all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of our thoughts. And were by nature children of wrath. Just as the others, the prince of power of error, Satan and his cohorts, that have the ability to oppress, possess, and terrorize humanity. Satan, again, possessed the snake in, the, in order to gain legal access into the garden. In Psalm 24. We were... Uh, away this weekend, or Friday, Thursday and Friday, and um, we were at this kind of like hotel resort area, and as we were walking along, then they had all of this amphitheater, and uh, this guy was out there talking, and all these people were in front of him. I couldn't see what was really going on for us. Then he pulls out this python. I'm thinking, dear God, I want to go chop its head off. I didn't, I, you know, I mean, my first thought is, I'm going to kill that thing. Huge thing. And, you know, I, I was thinking about going over there and grabbing it. Because one time, a friend of ours, my wife and I, after we had gotten back together, we went, we got invited to a friend's house, and this was just after we had been saved, and he had a, I forget, a cobra or something? A python, a bull, something like that, in this big, huge aquarium. And so he enclosed off a bedroom, and he would put mice in there and close it so that the thing could eat. And so he's got this huge thing in there. Now, my wife, being a baby in Christ at that time, so she's like, oh, I'm like, no, no. And, and so he pulls it out. And I'm thinking, dear God, what do I do, Lord? He said, bind that spirit. I bound that spirit. So when this huge, ugly, slimy, slippery thing, when, when he went to go put it on my wife, the thing curled up. Started curling up more and more and more and more and more to turn it into a hard ball. I mean, I could have drop kicked it across the street. 
And that thing stayed like, and the first thing's out of his mouth, what did you do to my snake? My pet snake. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill this thing. And my wife was going, wow, she's holding this thing. And he took it out of her hands. And he put it back in the aquarium. That thing acknowledged the anointing. Froze up. And I remember that. I was going to go over and take that snake out of that dude's hand and go, watch. But I wasn't told to do it. That would be a very embarrassing moment. <laughs> Anyways, this was... Knowing your enemy. To me, every snake is an enemy. Oh, he's just a garden snake. Kill it. Cut its head off. Believe me, they know when I come in my yard, they go. Poof. If I open my front door and they're there, they're gone because they know they're going to be beheaded because they've already been warned. Know your enemy. Now, there are some animals that are your enemy too, but that's because they're just demonized, you know. And you have to be careful with that. Anyways, Psalm 24. <laughs> Hallelujah. About four hours later, my friend calls. Well, actually, we called them and wanted to know what the heck was going on. He still wasn't unwound yet. This thing was still a hard ball. I had to wait till the next day to find out. He goes, yeah, you must have opened up sometime during the night. I said, yeah, man. I tried to tell him about Jesus then. <laughs> I said, bro, you need to know about Jesus. He was so concerned about his animal. I don't know what happened after that. We really didn't see too much of them. We weren't invited to their house after that. You know? <laughs> Verse 1, Psalm 24. The earth is the what? Lord's. And all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Remember, the earth is still ruled by God. It's the location. It's the system that's ruled by Satan's kingdom. But God has given the earth to the children of God. His children. So even though that we're in the location, we don't rule the world system. Satan rules the world system. But we are rulers and co-owners of this earth. So we can start kicking them out. If people will just do it. If they're not self-centered. Amen? Verse 2. For he who has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend it in the hill of the Lord. Who may stand in his holy place. He who has what? Clean hands and a what? Pure heart. <laughs> not self-centered. He who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation, the generation of those who seek him and who seek his face. We are that generation. Again, the earth is the Lord and his body of restrainers of evil are on the earth. But the world system is ruled by the kingdom of darkness. It's our responsibility to drive them out now. In Luke chapter 10. Oh, happy days. Luke ten seventeen. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it together, please. Then the seventy returned, the seventy disciples, with joy, saying, Lord, this is cool. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The authority over darkness, knowing who you are, and knowing who your enemy is is vital. You are identifying the influential spirits 
Amen? See, one of the things that we must do is identify our own motives. Our desires. What's emotionally feeling? What am I, what am I thinking? What is the desire of my choice? If I'm not examining these things, the powers of darkness know. Because if I'm not taking dominion over them, they know I won't have dominion over them. Does everybody understand? You'll try to cast out the devil, they'll laugh at you. You don't have any authority. Why? Because you don't submit to one. And there's where the consistency brings what? Alertness. James 4. I had somebody say something to me for, call me up or text me or something. I forgot what it was for uh, some counsel or something. And I said, Lord, what do I do about this? He said, tell them they missed the last service. They should have got counseled. I said, okay. Should have been at the last service. Should have got counsel. Praise God. Other than that, now you got to go to internal library and get it. He said to me, quit wasting your time. Quit wasting your time to those who are not with a loyal heart. I said, okay. Praise God. Let's move on. Let's get a loyal heart. Let's be accountable, dependable to the things of God. Let's be kingdom mindset. Let's move forward. Amen? Listen, people can come to a service and still not get it. Because they're drifted all over the place. They're so self-centered. Thinking about what they're going to eat, how they're going to do this, how they're going to do that, what they should have done. This or that. They never press over to cross over to connect and get God's ways, God's thoughts, God's heart. Sometimes people just come to show up to be show up. I, people call sometimes and go, I'm accountable. To what? And don't get me wrong. Some people will call and say, look at I can't. I'm doing this. Uh, there's something going on, whatever. Praise God. And I understand. We all, unfortunately, have lives in this realm. And things happen. Sometimes people have to work. Sometimes there's certain things that we don't have any control of. But God knows. Amen? I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about willful rejecting God's presence. Willful rejecting God's presence. Hallelujah. James 4, verse 1. Let's go for it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask correctly. Or you don't even have a right to ask because of your disobedience. The only thing you need to do first is repent and ask for mercy. <laughs> You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Adulteresses and adulteresses. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world system is, it becomes an enemy with God? And I know people don't want to become an enemy with God, but the enemy likes to deceive people so they become an enemy of God. Do you not know that friendship with the world is eminent with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, more way of escape, more favor. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud. The self-centered. But he gives grace, way of escape to the humble, submissive. Therefore, submit to who? God, not to yourself. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Submitting to Christ, his words, his words of life, his truth, his promises. So you, can, you and I can resist the influence of self-centeredness that promotes the life in the world system. We call that the matrix, amen? Refusing to bring Christ in our life 
many people, again, you and I, we don't want to bring Christ into our life. We want to bring our life into Christ. See, when people become self-centered, they try to bring Christ into their life. And they say, Lord, follow me. This is what I want to do today. Would you follow me? No, that's self-centeredness. See, our life is in Christ. His life is not in ours. You and I do not have a life. We were bought. He bought us back. Our life is in him. Nothing else. When we try to bring his life into our life, he rejects it. Amen? That's called self-centeredness. Oh, Lord, you know, I just want to do all this stuff and whatever, you know. <gasps> Not kingdom bound. Not kingdom minded. This is where people can't wait. They can't wait for an answer. See, we go to him and we ask, Lord, what do you think? Show me what I'm supposed to do. I'll wait for the answer. And they get confirmation from ungodly things. Not that God can't use anyone to speak to you. But I always like multiple confirmations. Because when you get a, it usually has a ripple effect to it. Confirmation upon confirmation. You might get a witness in your spirit. Then you get a confirmation. Usually something from a brother or a sister or a pa your pastor or whoever. Get confirmation before you do anything in that area. Especially when it involves something very important. That could be damaging or promoting. Amen. We want to make the right decision. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. This is where we have to ask ourselves. Does my existence bring glory to God or glory to self? 2 Timothy 3. What does the word say? Don't worry about your life. Amen. The heathens do that. Many, to, many that attempt to have bring the Lord in their life and have the Lord follow them, they drift and die. In verse 1. 2 Timothy 3, 1. Let's speak it together. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, which we know, and men will be lovers of what? Themselves, self-centeredness. Lovers of what? Money. And we know that the love of money is the root of all evil. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control or control over self. Brutal despisers of good traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Listen, any one of these will open the door. Well, I don't do all these. Well, I might do this one once in a while. That's open door. Amen. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Why is it a form of godliness? Because they, they don't practice all of these, but they may do some of them. For this sort of those who creep into households and ministries and businesses and make captives of gullible men and women, they load them down with sins and they lead them away with various lusts of the world. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth so that they may be free and empowered. Self-centered with blame, rebellion, offense, grudges, bitterness, false hopes. Many missed opportunities because of their position. Many missed opportunities of the rescue because of that position. Allowing temporary moments of pleasure from worldly ways. Then in a state of pleasure seekers of God. So they become worldly pleasure seekers and not God pleasure seekers. Is everybody okay? Colossians 2. Knowing your enemy. What does the word say? We don't fight against flesh and blood. Principalities. Powers of darkness. Wickedness in heavenly places. 
tells us to get dressed with the full armor of God. So people still sp skipping that part, not getting dressed with the full armor of God. Colossians 2, verse 8. Let's speak it. Beware lest anyone cheat you through what? Philosophy and empty deceit. <laughs> According to the tradition of what? Men, which is of the world. According to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? Complete in him. He is not complete in you. You are complete in him. There is a process. Well, your temple will be complete in him. Amen. He'll be complete. He'll take possession. But that is a continuous thing, though. Where the divine nature has reached its maturity. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him, everything's in him, isn't it? You were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. By putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through the faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead to your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwritings of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed the principalities and the powers, he made a public spectacle of the triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or drink, or regarding festival or new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by the fleshly mind. And not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, why would you go back? <laughs> why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to stupid regulations according to false religions? which all concern things, do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things, which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom or religion. And self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh or self-centeredness. No power over that. Amen. And Acts 3, in verse 18. Acts 3, 18. Glory. Let's speak it. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be what? Converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Oh man, when we need refreshing. And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his prophets since the world began. May refreshing. So when you and I come together, there should be a refreshing to us every time. As long as our heart has been exposed and the things of self-centeredness are removed. In James chapter 1, and then one more Location of Scripture. James 1. Knowing your enemy. James 1. 
James 1 verse 2. Hallelujah. My brethren, count it all joy <laughs> when you fall into various trials. Don't blame anybody else. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Oh, everyone is being tested. Amen. <laughs> But let patience have its what? Perfect work, which is endurance. That you may be what? Perfect and complete. Lacking nothing. Why? Because God is exposing your enemies. If you will let him. Your enemy is not your brother or your sister. Your enemy is in the mirror. The reason why things are being exposed is because of self-centeredness. Things that we've attached to self-centeredness. Exposing our enemies. Don't get me wrong, there's demonic influence. But they can't access you only if you let them. There's got to be a promotion of self-centeredness to open a door to the enemy all the time. Amen? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Wisdom does what? Tells you what to do. But let him ask him what? Faith. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from God. He's double-minded. Unstable. Believe me, God isn't going to give somebody who's double-minded and unstable. <laughs> He's double-minded and un uh, unstable in all their ways. Remember, God is going to expose your enemies through your trials and tribulations. He's going to test to see if you're truly his. He wants to know how loyal you are. Even when you don't feel his presence. Even when things are going against you and nothing's working. Hallelujah. Listen, everybody has it going on, man. Amen? Heck, in one day... A filling came out of my mouth, left a hole in my tooth. I'm like, what the heck? And then I go home to clean the pool, and I got bit by 10 to 12 wasps from one arm. I blow up like a balloon. I'm itching and scratching everywhere. Thank God my wife and the nurse threw some stuff in my mouth and helped me a little bit. But I was in tremendous pain. I had to put a thing around my arm. And then multiple things happened. I, could, I couldn't even keep up with all the things that was going on that was like, what the snap? The only thing I can think of is something must be going right. <laughs> when everything's going wrong, there's got to be something I'm doing that's right. <laughs> and I went to the Lord. I said, what's going on? And, and of course, oh, nothing. What do you mean Nothing. You're fine, guy. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep attacking the enemy. Did you think with not attacking the enemy, you wouldn't be attacked? He says the way you're bombarding the enemy, they're going to attack you. I thought, well, if this is all that's going to happen, then praise God, I'm okay. <laughs> keep me covered. He said, hide in the secret place while the calamities pass over you. But everything worked to the good. I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Everything works to the good. I mean, it was the strangest thing, man. Whoa. I mean, after the bite, bites, I, I never had this sensation in my hands and in my feet and under my arms. It was like I couldn't understand. I first started rubbing the bottom of my feet. I'm going, what's the problem with me? My arms blown up like a balloon. But my feet were itching like crazy when I started telling my wife about it. Then the palms of my hand. I never, I just had so much venom in my body. Then I remembered. First thing I, of course, said to the Lord, yo, what happened to Psalm 91? <laughs> <laughs> then I said, yes, remember, 
Paul picked up serpents that it didn't harm them. All things are going to work to the good guy. Okay. But you know, sometimes he wants to bring you through something to know whether you're going to quote what he says and not how you feel. Amen? So within three days, I was totally fine. Last time, I got bit once and it took a week. So hallelujah. I was grateful for that. I still blew up like a balloon, but it didn't matter. It was one bite compared to 12. I want to close it. John, 1 John chapter 4. Oh, happy days. So you ain't the only one who's going through it, man. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done or how long you've been walking with the Lord or how much you worship or how much you read your Bible. You're going to go through it because you're going to be tested. 1 John 4 verse 1. Let's speak it. Beloved, don't, do not believe every voice of a spirit. <laughs> But test those voices of the spirits, whether they are from God or not. Because many false prophets have gone into the world. We see them in all the media. Those are all false prophets. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Or in other words, you'll know them by their fruit. Amen. Because even these demons will lie. And I've seen that happen. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world system. So who rules the world system? The spirit of Antichrist. Amen? Or Antichrist. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. This is where your identity must stand forth. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Why? Because you're to know your enemy. You're to know whether it's the spirit of truth or the spirit of error. You'll know people by their desires. You'll know their hearts by their desires. What is their desire all the time? What is the number one thing in their life? What is the number two? Bring it all the way down to ten and find out who they are. Amen? Praise God. Know your enemy. Because he knows you. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace, and we ask that you protect the word that's been imparted in us today that would bring to remembrance that we may know our enemies by being consistent and alert, and to bring glory to your name that we may be discerners to drive out the enemy from their positions and establish your kingdom in every location in Jesus' name. Amen.